Good morning. It's Easter morning and he is risen. And we are here to gather together wherever we are and be as one. We are gathered today, Easter morning, to celebrate the risen king. He is alive. He is no longer there. He's not in the tomb. He is out. He has conquered death. Victory has been claimed. And, and we are here to celebrate. And as we begin our celebration, I want us to sing together. We haven't been able to sing together in a long time. And so in our hymnals, if you have one at home, if not, it's a real simple one. It's number 340. We're going to praise this together as we get started. Can we try this? Ready? I'm going to lead you with it. And I'm no singer by trade or anything like that, but I'm going to give it a whirl. And we're going to try turn our eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. You ready? Let's sing with me. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Again. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Last time. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Great and awesome God, we are so privileged to be able to celebrate this Easter day. The fact that you conquered the tomb and, and you took away all of death and you conquered it once and for all time, meaning that no matter what happens in this world, no matter what we have to endure, you have already conquered the worst thing, offering us the best thing, eternity with you. You have risen. Lord, we are praising you. And we know that when we turn our eyes upon you, Lord, the things in this world will grow dim. When we keep our focus on you, Lord, we know that the light that shines from you will blot out all of the problems of the world. You will cover them. You are the king. And you have risen. And you have claimed your place. And we are so thankful. Almighty God, bless us today as we gather. Bless us today as we go into your word to help us feel the risen Savior as he is in the world today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isn't it exciting to get together and sing? It's exciting to get together and go into God's word and to pray. And today is no different. We have several things that are on our prayer list. We have several people that we're praying for. And we need to keep that in mind as we go to God's Word. So we're going to go to God's Word. We're going to look at it. We have invited the Spirit to join us this morning. We have asked Christ to, to be a part of our celebration as we celebrate His rising from the grave. And now we go to God's Word. And we're in John chapter 20, starting at John chapter 20, verse 1. It says, early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone that had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple and the one whom Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived first at the tomb, bending down to look in. He saw linen clothes lying there, but he did not go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It wasn't with the other pieces of cloth. 
It was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one whom arrived to the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. As Mary stood outside near the tomb crying, and as she cried, she bent down and looked in the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? She replied, they have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've put him. And as soon as she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? What are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she replied, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said, said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me for I haven't yet gone up to the Father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I am going to up to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And then she told them what he had said to her. Almighty God, help us as we look at this story, as we recount this event, and we apply it to our lives, Lord. May it be applicable, and may it be worthy. May we understand it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isn't it something, friends, how this whole thing took place? Starting on Thursday, it's the momentum toward the cross really started to pick up steam. And we get to Friday night and the death, and he's in the grave all day Saturday, and then Sunday morning comes. And Mary gets up to go to the tomb, probably to just sit and have some quiet time by the graveside. We've all done that from time to time, I think. But when she got there, it was different. It wasn't what she expected. The stone was gone away from the door. She peeked in, there was no body. She ran back to get the disciples who read the scripture. You see what happened. They ran over. They didn't see Jesus there. They took back off, went back to where they were staying. Mary, standing outside the tomb, looked back in, saw the angels, turned around, saw somebody, started talking to them. Turned out it was Jesus, and she recognized him when he called her by name. On this Easter Sunday, we need to realize that Jesus Christ is standing there in his risen glory, and he's calling you by name. He's calling you by name. And he is saying your name, and he's saying that he loves you. I am here. And I am going to go to my father, to your father. Right? I have conquered the grave for you. For you. They didn't understand it. None of them did. And in the pages that follow, and in the things that transpire in the next 40 days, bring to life a change on this planet and in this world that has never, ever been close to duplicate it. Jesus the Christ comes out of the tomb conquering death like nobody else has ever done. And there he was, alive. Easter morning. Friday was sad, but Sunday came and Sunday brought glory and confusion, and misunderstanding, and all kinds of stuff. Sometimes we see things, sometimes we hear things. These disciples saw things, and they heard things, and they experienced things, and they still didn't get it. We're no different. We're no different at all. It's hard to unpack the glory of the tomb. Sometimes to think that, that Jesus went through all of that, the pain of death into the grave, the cold, dark, damp grave. 
only so that he could be risen. So that we would not have to face death like that. Our resurrection comes in Christ. And many of us believe that. And many more will come to believe that. As we share the story of the risen Savior. As we share the story of how this risen Savior has helped us individually. How has your story been shaped by our Savior? That's what people want to hear. That's what makes sense. That's what helps people understand. And so on this Easter Sunday, as we gather together today in our separate places... We are like those disciples, right? We, we have seen the empty tomb. We have experienced the fact that Jesus has called us by name. And now what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? And the only thing I can think of to do with it is to share it, as Jesus said we're supposed to. We're to go out and we're to share the love of Jesus Christ. We're to go out and share the grace and peace of Jesus Christ. We're to go out and share the sacrificing mentality to others that Jesus shared. We're to love other people as Christ loved us. This is how we respond to Easter, friends. But one of the other ways we respond to the moving of the Spirit in this moment is through prayer. And I would like us to join now in prayer on Easter. With your spirit connected with mine and all of our spirits connected with God, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Great and loving God, you have come out of the grave. For that we are forever thankful. We ask that you would guide our church, your church, the kingdom of Christ here on earth. Guide us, guide our leaders, guide our congregation into this new adventure after Easter, this, this new growth of the church that happens after Easter. The explosion that comes from the empty tomb happens after Easter. Prepare us, Lord, for, the, for that excitement. Prepare us for that energy level to come. Prepare us for the Spirit to blow into our lives like a strong wind. Help us to be ready. Because everything has changed now, Lord. We know that. And so today, Lord, we ask that you would bind us together with cords that will never be broken. As we lift up to you our prayers. And we pray them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars. And I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art then sings my soul my savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art and we prayed all this in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Almighty God, send us out on this Easter day. Launch us, Lord, in response to the grave with energy and excitement. Happy Easter, friends. Happy Easter to you. Praise God that he is risen. May you know now in this time of turmoil in this world that he has risen from the grave and he has set everything to be right. What will happen from this point on will be different than anything that's been ever experienced. As Easter creates the new beginning. And the new beginning creates the great church. The great church of Jesus Christ. Help this Easter be the launching pad for the new beginning of Christ's church. For this church. And for everybody around. Have a great Easter. God bless you. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.